Okay, let's share the word this morning. Give me some sound. Okay, I, I'm going to be preaching on what I titled Keeping the Ordinances Part 1. And that part one, we're going to look into what we call the Christian dressing. Keeping the ordinances, part one. And that part one, we're going to look into what we call the Christian dressing. The Christian dressing. And I pray for one prayer that God will open your revelational eye. You know, there are revelational eyes that will make you to see understand and believe. Is that correct? So when you have that revelational eye, it will make you to understand why we preach what we preach, why we say what we say, and why the Lord has been doing it, and I believe the Lord will make it an understanding for you to catch the great revelation and the story behind the mystery story behind it to the glory of God. Amen. Amen, church. Amen, church. First of all, take me to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, 24 to 26. Matthew 16 from verse 24. Yes, we're, we're talking about taking up your cross and following Jesus on things uh, that is among it. Go ahead. Then Jesus said unto his disciples. And Jesus said unto his disciples. If any man will come after me. He said, if any man will come after me. Let him deny himself. Let him deny himself. And take up his cross and follow me. And take up his cross and follow me. Now, when you're trying to analyze taking up a cross, he's not talking about you building up a cross and carrying the same way he's carrying. Because sometimes you might be shocked because of level of understanding and the mixture in a congregation. You will overlook it that everybody understood what it means by carrying the cross. And you'll be shocked that there are people still who are in the church who we see carrying the cross as carrying a physical. <laughs> Amen, church. So, when the Bible says, when Jesus said to his disciples that if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and do what? That means deny yourself so many good things, partying, dancing, and be ready to follow the true path of Christ-like, which makes you a Christian. Go ahead. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. He said, whosoever that will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. Amen. 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 Whatever you go through at the process of running the race, at the end of the race, you will do what? Church, you will do what? You will find it in heaven. And that's why, where you will have eternity. So sometimes, there are some doctrines that does not follow, uh, uh, fall into the kind of way of life. That's why we want to talk about dressing today. There's some kind of pattern of things that you do not want to do. It doesn't favor you. You want to be like others, you know, and all that. But the Bible says, for you to get it done, Jesus said to his disciples, there are things you must deny yourself. And that's one of the things we want to look into today in the part one. Go ahead. For what is a man profited? He said, what will you profit? If he shall gain the old world if and you lose his own soul. Old world, whatever you want. You want to do this, you want to do that. You want to be naked, you want to do this and all that. If you do it, yeah. Then at the end of the day, you lose your soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange of his soul? And what shall a man give in the exchange of his soul? That is a question for you to meditate on, go through in your heart as we are about to digest the true word of God to the glory of God. Amen. 
Now, let's go into the scripture. Take me to Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Now, as the teaching is about to commence fully, prepare your question. Please remind me that there are countries in Scotland where men wear skirts. Prepare your questions because I will only be ready to do what? To do what? Is? Answer. Answer you. <laughs> Go ahead. The woman shall not wear that which pertained unto a man. A woman, a woman shall not wear that which does what? Pertained unto a man. Which belonged to a man. A woman shall not wear what a man is supposed to wear. Uh -huh. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Now, neither will a man put on, put on what? A woman's garment. A woman's what? Garment. I, I want to understand what God said. What did he say? He said that is what? For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. This is where the thing is so vital. That anybody who does that, that in the sight of God, it is what? An abomination for a woman to dress like a man or dress with what belongs to a man and a man dress vice of what belongs to a woman. You know, I, I, I logged into social media. I saw, I saw this young boy. The, I don't know if a Yoruba or Yoruba man. This young boy, they call Bob, uh, Bob Riske. Yoruba? What do you mean? Nobody know. And clearly, he is bobbing and risking. It's not funny. He is bobbing and do what? Risking. You know why the thing baffles me is that it's a wrong doctrine, but a lot of youth wants to be like him now because he makes money from nothing. Hello. It's a style of life for him. It gives him money. It makes him comfortable. And thinking about the race we are running does not come to that boy's head. He will wear, he will wear prana because I receive something that look like breast. I don't know what he put it there. If no range, I mean, I go back. Mask breast. Oh. Then he will paint. If I say they put something in his hips too. Huh? He put bum bum. He put bum bum. And when you go to this so-called thing they call social media, he has influenced a lot of youth. He has a lot of defense. That even people defend him and say, allow him to do is his life. Is your life or is your life? On that day too, you will know that it is your... I'm not arguing that. Is your life or is your life? Let me tell you, sir. God is aware that there are things that is abnormal. The Bible said it's an abomination in the sight of God. When a man wears what protects a woman and when a woman wears what protects the man. Now the conflict in the church now says how then will you know which one is man? Which one is a woman? I was talking somewhere somebody said, now, is, is it not women that wear up? I said yes. They said but at the old age that uh, old men um, uh, uh, as in our fathers that it is rapper the the wear. You know, you know the funniest thing is the Bible said we are in the prelude time. You should be careful because those people can even deceive an elect. An elect means some who has been chosen can even be deceived by those people. That's why I took you to Matthew where we read. That it is so clear that God says it will take you to deny yourself a lot of things. But when you run this race, then you will end it well. The Bible said it's an abomination for a man to wear what protects the man. Let me tell you something. You see the transist women wear, they learned it from abroad. 
And the funniest thing in Africa is that anything they copied from the white, they do it worse than those. The cigarette you see an Oyibo man smokes, he smokes that cigarette because of the weather change. But in night, one day I was driving past. Even the AC, the level of heat that day, the AC was equally blowing heat. And I saw some standing in that level of sun. I was smoking the cigarette. I was smoking cigarette. And I was like, can you see this one alive? Some of them has become so addicted to it that they have no other option than to smoke. It's no longer the smoke, it's no longer because of the coldness, but the smoke now it is a habit that somebody wants because you watch some videos, you, you learned it from somewhere and you began to do them. I can bet you that even the white people that brought and introduced religion of Christianity in Africa did not wear trousers to come and preach. Did they? Church, hear me. Did they? When you see them, you will know that these people were covering their... Okay, let me show you something. Take me to Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10. Proverbs 7, verse 10. Yes, what did he say? And behold, and, and what? Behold, and behold, there met him a woman. Uh -huh. I think that's Solomon, yes. With the attire of an allot. Hear this. He said, there met him a woman with what? Attire of what? Allot. Wait, so that means there is a dressing you will dress, you look like what? Allot. You don't understand me. He said, that makes him a woman with an attire of an allot. That means, and I shall have a dressing. That's what it means. A halot in Nigeria, we call them waiting. I shall not be so. That means, he said, I met a woman with an attire. That means there is a dressing you will dress. You look like what? A halot. You know, there's some churches today. That where you go, they will first of all tell you it doesn't matter. Come as you as you are. And the doctrine has gone so wide that people are no longer seeing it as a problem. So they can now come as you. You will see somebody. Who, when I was playing keyboard somewhere in Enugu so many years back. And one of those churches that preaches come as you are was where I was. To play the keyboard for them. A girl with a mini skirt was dancing. And if she do like this, you will see the inner part. And at that time, as a young man, as a student, your mind will live from the keyboard you're playing. And when you have seen and imagined some immoralities you have already done what? Sin against God. That means a harlot has an attire. And some people will tell you, come as you are. It doesn't matter that what God watches is your heart. My brother, that dress of harlot, you can never wear that attire and go and meet ordinary governor, not to talk of a president. When they invite you for a job, will your attire look like a harlot attire? You will dress well now. You want to appear well that at your arrival, they will tell you, oh, no, no, this one looks decent. They don't know you are among those girls that wear trousers. When, there's one I saw one day. The tear here. The kneel here. I don't need to show me the kneel. This kneel we are tear. As she passed, I don't know, say here, tear. This thing is not funny. The church you will go today, you will see a woman will wear 
a very this uh, macaroni macaroni honey spaghetti honey ah. and come to church you are coming to the presence of God you can no longer cover yourself no wonder Paul said if you are a woman and you don't want to cover your head that it is better you go and do what shave it, shave it, clean it up you don't want to cover it you just go, go find Baba make it come out it's not funny people will you know another problem is the preaching people do when Jesus Christ came people said he came and he condemned the law I can tell you that Jesus didn't condemn the law that was the scriptures he didn't come to do what he didn't come to condemn the law see in everything you do there must be a regulation what Jesus came was that he introduced grace and put us straight to this regulation that the regulation is now attached to God's grace and that's it. By that time when you see you die. But now Jesus has come. When you see you will not die. You have opportunity to ask what? Forgiveness of what? At that time when you see mercy, especially when you are a priest. When you come to the altar. You die. And every law then. Okay. Let me give you an instance. Take me to Exodus 20. From 1 to. Exodus 20 from verse 1 to 21. If you look at those scriptures, you will see that there is nothing that have changed. Yes. Exodus 20 from verse 1. Yes. And God spoke all these words saying. And who spoke? Who? God. God spoke all these words saying. I am the Lord thy God. I am the Lord thy God. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. He said to the Israelites, I have brought you out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt have no what? Other God. Let me tell you. That was a commandment in the Old Testament. Correct? Is that commandment still in existence now? Of course. Eh? Very correct. Even till now, when you serve another God beside God, you're cursing a wahala. What was the second one? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not make unto you any graven. When you go and construct one something, graven image, maybe you do them. He said this one now. You know, there's, I don't want to mention some churches. There are churches you will go. They will carve images like Jesus, Mother Mary. Uh, Jesus, uh, Stick. So, Joseph. Now, Joseph, the color. Now, you are hearing from. And you wish. Which one you talk? Now, you are hearing from. You will see some people. They will run to Oshishi Apirapi. A graven image. They, they, they will hold it. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. The whole Lord, I am holding you. Hey! You are holding a shishi. A shishi. You are holding a stick. And do you know there are demons behind of making that miracle to come to pass? Oh, yes. And when that your prayer is answered, you still believe that God. Eh? Huh? And there's one thing that mystery about God. God will equally allow the miracle to happen. You know why? Because both the genuine power, both the evil powers, belongs to who? That is why the Bible said that God is the head of principalities. And so He will allow those, let them do it. And your head, your spiritual eye will be blocked. To an understanding that you are serving a graven image. When Jesus came and died and broke the veil, he gave us access that even in your bedroom, you can kneel down and call God and God will do what? You don't need something that the Bible made it clearly. In Acts of Apostles chapter is it 4 verse 2. Right? He said there is no other name. Acts of Apostles 4 verse 1. 
12, verse 12. He said, there is no other name given among men that we might be what? So, and the Bible made us understand in, in, in John that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the what? So, it is only through Jesus you can do what? So, that thing that, that, that you're kneeling down. Hey, Mother Mary, answer me. Which Mother Mary? Hey, that one, she, 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 Even as Jesus came, I will tell you very loud and clear that the commandment of Jesus has not changed. What was uh, of God has not. Let me, let me hear another one. Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. You see, him, see him. He said, don't create any image of likeness of anything that is what? In heaven above. In heaven what? That means it is wrong to construct Jesus as an image. It is wrong to construct. Uh, Mary, Mary as what? what, what, what? Image. An image. He said, do not construct anything image that is likeness of heaven's what? Above. Yes, continue. All that is in the earth beneath. That is even on the earth beneath. All that is in the water under the earth. That is even under the That means even the mammy water. Don't create anything image. God will not. is an idol worship. Yes. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Thou shalt not do what? But today now, if I show, I have videos on that. If I show you, they will reach where, instead of them to go to altar, kneel down and pray, they will just go and find where they have crafted all these images and they will go there and kneel down. They will be buying head. Chineke, chineke. Which chineke are you calling? Nor serve them. Nor serve them. For I am, for I the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. I am a jealous God. I will not prefer. Call my name straight. Talk to me. This is the iniquity of the Father upon the children and unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Uh -huh. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me uh -huh. and keep my commandments. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Even to today, when you use the name of God to play, play jest and bring comedians, even in New Testament, God has actually do what? Condemn them. So, if you look at the mysteries, you will understand that all those commandments in the Old Testament was not actually condemned. In the same reality of the New Testament, it was it is equally the same thing that has been in operation. Is that correct? And the Bible made it so clear that it is a sin for a man to wear what belongs to what? Eh? A woman. And as long as we are concerned, With the revelation of those who the Lord brought to Africa that introduced Christianity to us and to we now that God has opened our eyes to understand the true revelation of the end time, it is very wrong for a woman to wear trousers. Amen. Amen. So it is very, very wrong. Very, very wrong. Continue in that scripture. Thou shalt not, okay, verse 7. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take his name in vain. Uh -huh. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Mm -hmm. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy works. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Okay, let, let, let's leave there. Take me to First Corinthians 11, 1, 1 to 10. Then after that, we'll go to the controversial aspect of it, 11 to 16. First Corinthians 11 from verse 1 to 10. Now, this is where the Lord spoke about, revealed to us, that a woman should do what? Cover her. Cover her. That's why in our church, men, we don't allow you to wear short knicker. You know, dress well now. Wear trousers. And when you want to wear your, your clothes, let it cover you up. Because when you're coming in the presence of God, this sense matters. Let me tell you, a lot of churches today, if you're a young man, you go to church. Some of the kind of ladies sitting by you can have the kind of, uh, let me use the word manipulation, to, manipulation the, uh, to manipulate this service of that day to you. A girl is beautiful. But Instead of her to be beautiful in the outward, she will leave her body open. Ah, 
See, I'm a singer, I'm a music minister. I, I've come to minister in so many places that when you see some lady, they will be beautiful, but they will open up, uh, they will wear something that uh, that will be somewhere here. They are, they are, uh, their breast, their body pumps out from here. Amen. Even the skirt they wear cannot get to the nail. At least in our church, we tell you, even if you are wearing skirt, let it get to the what? Huh? Kneel beyond. But there, they will wear something here. Now, when they will come in the front, and the worship minister will be singing, you, the way they act, you will think if heaven comes, they will appear number one. You see them. And before you see them, cry will start coming. Let me tell you, tears is not an evidence of repentance. And the brother that is singing with you by the side is singing that and praying in his heart. Let this church close. So that it will follow sister. <laughs> it's not a funny matter. So you allow the spirit of immorality to cover the church because your preaching is come as you. It doesn't matter. It matter. If you cannot dress well when you're coming in the presence of God, but immediately Mr. President calls you on phone. They say, I have an appointment with you. There is no way not dress responsible and smart. In fact, even if you will not cover your hair, you will see that they will pack the hair. I don't know how they won't allow you to be doing like this. But if you go to church, ah, and what does the Jesus say to the disciples? For you to make this happen, deny yourself some certain things. What does it take you to cover your hair? Cover your hair. And you know, when you cover in a church, you they come. Take me to that scripture I told you. First Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 1. Uh -huh. Be ye First follower, Corinthians 11. Be ye follower of me. Uh -huh. Even as I also am of Christ. Uh -huh. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them unto you. The apostle said, keep the ordinances as I'm going to hand them over to you. But I would have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man is Christ. That the head of every man is what? Christ. Understand now, this is the revelation of where all these things started from. He said, the head of every man is what? Christ. Then the head of every woman is who? And the head of every woman is the man. The head of every woman is who? The man. You know, in part two, we are going to look into why we don't ordain women pastors. Because I'll be here giving you your assignment as a pastor. Then your head. Who is your head? Your head is not. If you're a woman here, your head is not your pastor. Every woman here, are you hearing me? In fact, every married woman here, your head is not your what? Who is your head? Your. Who do you suppose to take instruction from? Now, if you're a pastor in my church, in our church here, and I give you instruction that you're going to preach in about tomorrow. And already your husband has planned to go to Abuja for his business. I'm believing that the wife will be there with the children. And when you reach out, hey, uh, honey, honey, uh, our overseer said uh, it is my turn to go to Abuja to preach that I'm preaching on Monday and Tuesday. And your husband said no. Which one will you obey? No, the one you're supposed to obey is husband. But I'm asking church, which one will the woman supposed to obey? The one of your pastor, not be so. Huh? Huh? Now, pastor. Bring microphone. I want to start now. No, no, I don't enter them now. 
Uh, uh, tell me, tell me your view. G give him mic. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Yes. No, Pastor. God bless you, sir. The fact remains, you know what it is. Most young women, especially wife, they obey their pastor rather than their husband. They obey their pastor. What's more than their husband? Their wife. Okay, so but what is your position that if your wife is a pastor now and his overseer gives him gives her instruction to go and preach somewhere and whereby the husband wants to travel and give an instruction that he should take care of the children, which one do you think? Okay, pastor, before I answer that question, yes, sir. Uh -huh. What we are discussing recently happened in my own house. Okay. With my own wife. Wife, okay. Because I made an instance where I told her, mm -hmm. Assuming you were given a function to go and preach somewhere, mm -hmm. and I said no, you won't go. She told me she would go because she did the work of God. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't say any other thing. That is you didn't say any other thing. You really said he's doing, doing the work of God. You started shepherding. And probably I don't want to have any quarrel with God, so I kept. Quiet. You didn't want to have any quarrel with God. Yes, I kept. Quiet. Quiet. That is marriage with intimidation. <laughs> marriage with intimidation. Because she just involved God and this man said, ha, ah, they don't come. But inside you, you are not. And the truth remains that inside of you, you didn't accept it. You didn't accept it. Okay, let me hear more before we talk on that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, uh, to my own, to my own business. If uh, a woman is really married, is really if, it's, if, I, if it's my house, uh -huh. I say, uh, my wife from where? And the pastor sent the wife, my, my wife from where? The, the woman, will obey my own before the pastor because I'm the, if she is really married, uh -huh. any woman that is really married must obey the husband before the pastor because the, man, the husband, that husband, the head, the husband, the head, and the own, owner of that woman, uh -huh. the husband, the head, and the owner of the woman, or even, or, or even all the family. So a woman is supposed to obey the uh, husband before the pastor. If a pastor sends you somewhere, your uh, husband sends you somewhere, you obey your husband first. First. Before your own pastor. Okay, I've had that right position. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> let, let me hear more before we continue this teaching. Is it because I've taken position before I say I ask questions? That's why some people are quiet. Okay. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. I've seen this uh, catastrophe somewhere. Hmm. That. Uh, the situation whereby they say the woman, because the husband told the woman that you be going to church from Monday to Sunday, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you don't even have chance for the family. And the woman got angry and packed off his load. And go. And, and go to the church. Oh. And even they accommodate. And the pastor accepted it. accommodated uh, the woman and gave her room. because. He and the pastor her gave her room. For my own uh, former church. No, not my own okay. I mean, to my own uh, perspective, okay. I, I, I can't say that it's totally wrong. It's very wrong. But because the, the man, I mean, the woman is supposed to obey the husband. husband. First. And second, the pastor that accommodated the person is supposed to even take the woman back and please not show her and let her understand that he, she is now married to a man that owes her. That's Amen. The Amen. Okay, let me hear more, more before we proceed. Any question or contribution? Okay, okay, now let's go back to that scripture now. Okay. okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, man. Um, normally, I would say that the woman is supposed to respect the pastor. Oh, okay. In the sense that um, if you respect your pastor, at the end of the day, if you go home, you still respect your husband. Um, the main thing is that if your pastor sent you somewhere and your husband is traveling, to my own understanding, you will respect your husband than your pastor. Because if you respect, your, if you disobey your wife and respect your pastor, at the end of the day, you still come back home and meet your husband. Maybe quarter we start. You're answering two things at the same time. You took two positions at the same time. You say you should obey the pastor, you should obey the husband. So what is your position? The main thing there is, a woman should respect the husband. The husband. Uh -huh. Okay, I have one here. I have one. Uh -uh. They don't play too. 
Uh, wait, before you give Bora, give woman first. Woman never talk here. Then you come to Bora if you them. See, I'm not saying. See, sister. Praise God. Hallelujah, man. The actual thing is that the woman needs to respect her, her husband. But if I thought that the pastor wants to say her for evangelism, he's supposed to inform her very early so that you will discuss it with her husband. If your husband give her free hand to go, he can go in bed. Let it not be the, maybe when the thing is sudden, you not tell the woman that will go somewhere. Maybe they have, have something, uh, maybe have, have something to go. So I feel that if something like that, the pastor should inform the woman very early so they can discuss it with the husband. Okay, now, even if he discusses uh, very early and the husband's stance is you're not going. I will leave it now. The you know go go? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, bring here, somebody is raising hand here. Praise the Lord. Amen. I think what I will say in that issue is if you understand that there is difference between respect and obedience, you will not make such mistakes. Respect is not obedience. You respect your pastor and obey your husband. You can respect somebody without obeying him. Let me say, Daddy called me. If he please come now, now. I came. I have respected him. Please go and kill this man. No, I will not kill him. I have respected, but I did not obey. So you respect your pastor and obey your husband. Thank you. Respect your pastor. If he has given us a new definition, respect your pastor. <laughs> and, uh, and the way you said it now, uh, uh, you know, you know all these young men that are graduating. <laughs> now they are finishing us with. Uh, okay, let's let's hear more before we talk on it. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, sir, I, I'm saying this based on what I experienced from my neighbor. You know, some months ago, my neighbor was having issue. So when I asked, he said I should not mind a man that is demon that is taking in charge of him. That what? That is demon that is that is, okay. is possessed by evil spirit because of church matter. The reason is that they were going out for a program. I don't know. She didn't tell me where. So when I was like, the man said, she's not going. The woman starts shouting, oh, that I, I cast you, I bind you, you are possessed, you are this. So based on that experience, thank God that something like this came up. Even when I called the woman, I don't know what to say. Let it not be, I will say, now nah, God will be angry. Or I will say, the man will carry the cutlass and come and meet me in my house. So in this case now, is it true that the man, uh, that the man is possessed? That's where I throw this thing to lay. Okay, this one is a different ball game. Like, the woman is inviting the husband. If I'm back, I will do it. Or you can even do it small and say, Daddy, please, let me rush and share this thing and come back and finish it. It's every wife, if you're a wife, a real wife, you know how to hold down your, your husband. Amen? Okay, is there another thing? So we proceed. Now, let's be very fast on that question so that we proceed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, amen. As for me, I think before any pastor asks a lady to do anything, you must first of all tell her to ask the husband if the husband will agree before she can move on. Okay, that means you are making a stand of uh, permission to surely come from the husband. Uh, so permission should, right? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Amen. Now, now, let's go back to this scripture we read before so that I can make some analysis. The, the rain is very heavy today. Let's, let's go. From verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. He said, understand this, the head of every man in the house is who? Christ. Is Christ. Uh -huh. And the head of every woman is the man. Now, the head of every woman is what? The man. Your husband is your, your head. Uh huh. And the head of Christ is God. Now the head of Christ is who? God. Now that is why no wonder Paul said a woman should remain silent. In fact, Paul said you shouldn't allow a woman to even preach. 
he went so far trying to convince us that a, a man takes the first position and a woman takes what? The second position. He convinced us that much. Now, in this issue of woman, that's why we don't ordain women pastor here. You know, if you are called, your submission should be to who? To God, not your husband. Is that correct? Eh? It should be to God. And that is why we have discovered that what God does with women is that God gifts women. Women are highly what? Gifted, but they are not what? Do you know the difference between calling and gifted? There are women who are prophetess. There are women that when you meet them in the office of evangelism, you will run away. They are highly gifted. So God has gifted women. That's why when you go to where a woman is operating in a ministry, you will know that his gift is on fire. But no wonder why Jesus never decided to kill a woman. At the Old Testament, women were not called. The high priest were what? Men, not women. When Jesus came, he decided to call 12 disciples. Was a woman involved? No. Even when Judas died and one was replaced, was he a woman? A man. But were there people too close to Jesus than the disciples? Yes. Yes. And those people were what? Women. Mary, Martha. When I say too close, too close. But there was no day, despite their closeness to Jesus, that he confirmed them as an apostle. Because the head of a woman is not Jesus. The head of a woman is what? A man. Man is the glory of a woman. Man came from, woman came from a man and that is why you are called woo because you came from the womb of a man. So when you go to a church, where a woman is positioned as a pastor, it is not biblical. It is not scriptural. It's not anywhere you find it. From Genesis to Revelation, the Bible is the instrument of what we preach. Is there anywhere a woman was called? No. Why? Then where did they start that we start calling women? Even now, women are now being ordained as bishops. Kai. Whereby the Bible said for you to be a bishop, you must be a man with one wife. So how come now a woman now has become a bishop? Because the business of God has become a physical business. In abroad, the constitution protects women and children very well. I've been opportune to travel and I can tell you that and the reason is because, you know, they believe a man is a very strong. So they needed a soft landing, something that can protect a woman. But trust women now, they are now using it like a sword. Anytime I travel to America, you see a lot of men, they will come, they will be crying. Daddy, you see, I brought my wife from Nigeria. My wife is so wonderful, so respectful. But daddy, as I'm talking to you, my wife cannot even give me food. He will, she will tell me, your food is there. Have you cooked? In fact, if I'm coming, my wife will say, have you finished cooking? My wife will say this. My wife will say that. My wife will say, if you make noise, I will send you out of this house. Because the constitution is giving them more leverage. The children, the same thing. When you slap your son, he will call police on you. Police will come and arrest you. I have one of our members in the U.S. that came there. Immediately he came. He told the son, if you talk here, I will, I will use rope to tie your leg. Flog you very well. Here, no be America. Amen. Amen. And that is why you see a lot of their grown-up children misbehave. I will tell you with confidence that there are more respectful and great children in Africa than in the Western world. A lot of them brings back their children to go to secondary school here and have a mental upbringing of Africa. Now, that is why in the scripture, 
where we read now in Corinthians, it is clear that even God knows that when God calls in a woman into the office of a pastor, that even God will deprive the man being in charge of the woman. Because God will just wake up, he will give her instruction. I want you to go and deliver somebody in Ogun State. And you don't have option now. Is that not correct? Then you will leave your husband. Your husband is going to work. Children, who will stay with them? A lot of things. Who will do this? Who will do that? Your responsibility as a woman, you can't do it. That is why the Bible said that a woman is a help. A help what? To what? A man. So God cannot, God does not break his institution that he has built. He built it that way and that is how it is. And that is why God kept women to operate in the office of gift. gift. Women are gifted as a prophetess, as this, as that. But when they are called into office, you know, you know, ministry has gone so wrong that you will see a woman, you will say, Daddy, I am called to be this, I am called to be this. I will say, oh, God bless you. God bless. They don't even understand the meaning of the word called into it. But some of them, when I look at them, I know that they need teaching. I will tell them, what do you do? say, what I'm seeing, I said, you are gifted. What you need is to pray God to direct you where you're going to be. Subject yourself to the pastor of that church. Then they will allow you to use your gift. Then you can use your gift to prophesy. But because of the coverage the constitution has given in the Western world, any man who wants to start a church, the wife's name must be what? Must be there. And the worst one now, the worst one now that happens is that what men of God does is immediately they are being ordained. They will equally ordain their own wife. Eh? Uh, I never noticed that. They will ordain their own wife what? A pastor. Pastor Mrs. Pastor Mrs. Pastor. Now that women are answering bishop, it will now be Apostle Bishop Mrs. Let me not mention name now because I, I can mention name. The name is ordinary, but now you go fall into somebody's name somewhere. You say Nahim, I use preach. I don't mention name. Pastor Mrs. something. Amen. So now, like what we read, the head of every woman is what? Is a man. And the head of every man is what? Christ. But it was just a story that brought us today. That's not what we're teaching on today. Go ahead. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying. Now, hear this. This is where we wanted to take our emphasis before we started saying something else and questions started coming. Okay. Having Every man praying. God, answer me. Prophesying. Lord, my people shall be delivered. Uh -huh. Having his head covered. Now, go and we are up as he's doing it. Dishonored his head. Dishonored his head. And you know there is somebody who is his head. Christ. Which is who? Christ. Christ. Yes. But every woman that prayed or prophesied with her head uncovered. Now, every woman who is answering a prophetess or praying come to the altar of God with her head on what? Uncovered. Uncovered. Dishonored her head. Dishonor at her head. Uh -huh. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. Uh -huh. For if the woman be not covered, if you don't cover her hair, let her also be shown. It's better you go and do what? Babit. Go and do what? Go and shave. If you don't want to cover it, you, you, you buy a creeper. We have uh, this thing here. We have socket here. And you'll be shocked to have Baba as member. You won't pay. You won't pay. You won't pay. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, uh -huh. let her be covered. Now, if it will be a shame for them to go and shave you the hair, it can't look like a uh, chairman's own. So it is better you do what? You go and do what? I'm going to show you where there is a controversy in that scripture. And that is where other people are saying a woman should not. I'm going to bring that scripture now. 
For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. A man that's supposed to cover his head. For as much as he is the image and the glory of God. As long as he is the image and the glory of what? God. Uh -huh. But the woman is the glory of the man. You see, he said, a woman is the glory of who? The man. But a man is the glory of who? God. You see two things. So that is why, if you call it a woman into office of a pastor, there will be a problem in the house. A very big problem. It is wrong for a woman to take orders from your pastor without a direct discussion with your husband and without approval from your husband. Most especially when it comes to sensitive others. You know, the others have um, levels. I, I can tell you, Mama, please go and clean the chair. We're not asking you to go and go to the house. Ask your husband, should I clean the chair? <laughs> Amen? As long as you're in the church, you're going to do one or two things. Not be so. But when it comes to others that are sensitive, Madam, uh, you're going to be in the church till 6, 7 a.m., 7 p.m. in the evening. There will be meeting, there will be this, there will be that, there will be... If your husband is not a member of that church, quickly run, pick your phone, and say, Daddy, please, uh, the pastor said there is an emergency meeting, this and that, that all of us will stay back. If your husband says, No, come back, quickly drop the phone, go to your pastor, and take what? For me... All these things are very understanding. But if your husband said, no problem now, then you do what? Then if you have been ordained a pastor with such level of uh, instruction that lies in the hands of your husband, you cannot do a work of what? A pastor. No wonder why Jesus never allowed a woman. No wonder why in the Old Testament, no priest was a woman. No wonder why in the 12 disciples, no woman was among no wonder why when one died, no woman was replaced. No wonder why that women were so close to Jesus and they were best friend of Jesus and he never used one and ordained. Amen? But that doesn't mean women do not participate in things of the ministry because women are highly gifted. I don't know if my explanation is clear here. We are not saying a woman will not prophesy. That's not what we're saying. Amen. Go ahead. For the man is not of the woman... The but the woman, the woman. Uh -huh. of the man. Uh -huh. Neither was the man created for the woman, uh -huh. but the woman for the man. You see, a man is not created for a, but a woman is created for, to be a help. So, that's why it is so clear that, you know, in, in terms of, I think there was something uh, Pastor Chris was preaching that went viral on the internet one time. He said, your husband is not your mate. There's a way he, he, he said it. I've forgotten the title. He said, your uh, he said, your husband is your master, not your mate. You know, it, there's something all these femi, femi, uh, what do you call it? Feminists. All these women, what do they call them? Feminists, right? You know, they're trying to project that marriage is uh, and their projection is working for them. That marriage is 50, 50, yes. Equal right. That you do this, you do that, you do that. And as I'm talking to you, marriage is not an equal. Your husband is your head. And you as a wife is a subject. And the thing is favoring them. And the thing is favoring them. It's favoring them. And I keep laughing because they are leading them to hell. That's not the position of God. That's not the principle of God. That's not what God has slain. Amen, church. Now, I want you to go down to where the controversy of the rounding up of Paul that brought the controversy. I think it started from 10 or 11. Is it 11 from verse 11? Let me stop. I'm at verse 10 now. Okay. For this cause, ought the woman to have power for this cause, all the woman to have power on her head uh -huh. because of the angels. Uh -huh. Verse 11. Nevertheless. Now, here, the controversy part. That they forgot where 
it was so clear. I said, cover your hair. If you will not cover it, you do what? You shave it. It was a clear definition of coverage. Now, remember that hair is a glory of a man in the life of a woman. Man is the glory, see, of the woman and whereby the man is of Christ and Christ is of God. Now, he made this comment and he said, really, go ahead. Nevertheless, nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman. Uh -huh. Neither the woman without the man uh -huh. in the Lord. Uh -huh. For as the woman is of the man, uh -huh. even so is the man also by the woman. Uh -huh. But all things of God. Judge in yourself. Is it comely that the woman pray unto God uncovered? Uh -huh. Does not even nature itself teaches you that if a man a man have long hair is it a shame it is a shame for him but Unto if him. the woman have long hair it is a glory, it to, is her. glory to her uh -huh. for her hair is for her hair for is given for her for covering that's where the issue of controversy came in now he said the hair is a glory and that is because of the man. And the man is because of who? God. Now, when Paul was talking about covering, he was not talking about hair. He was talking about head. There is difference between hair and your head. He said if you will not cover it as a woman, you go and do what? Shave it. Is that correct? But he makes it clear because the man is your glory. So this hair, you are meant to live it because it's a covering for you because your glory is attached to a man and whereby the man is attached to God. But when you are praying and prophesying, you must cover your head. If you don't want to cover it, the Bible said you should go do what? Shave it. So it was a great two different scenario that I don't know where they're interpreting their own from. That is why if you go to church today, a lot of people do not cover their hair, which is a shame. A lot of people do not cover their hair and the Bible made it so clear if you're a woman and you're praying and prophesying that you should go and do what? Cover your what? Then if you don't cover her head, that you should do, do what? Go and do what? Shave it. So because of that interpretation, they now began to say different things and come as you are. It doesn't matter. It doesn't do this. We have shown you why the Bible man is so clear that when you are a woman and where what protects the man or a man where what protects the woman that it is an abomination in the sight of what? Of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The rounding up before questions will come. Come me to Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. Yes. From verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Now, we are in a time where people can no longer endure sound doctrine. In Matthew, where we read in the morning, make it so clear. He said you're going to deny yourself things that you personally want. Things that you personally need. Things you are believing to do as that will give you comfort. He said for you to make the kingdom of God, you must do what? Deny yourself such kind of thing. What does it cost a man or a woman? That you're going to a church, you enter, they say cover your hair. You enter, they say this thing you're wearing is too low. Use Rafa, cover up. Don't come here and show us your nakedness. Don't come here and show us your nakedness. After showing us your nakedness, you told us you're coming from a church where they say, come as you are. It doesn't matter. Here, it, is, it, it matters. Where we read in Proverbs chapter 7, made it so clear. The man said, I met a woman who was dressed in attire of what? A harlot. That means an ashawa have a dress. Yes. yes. But after their own loss, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. After their own loss, they want to say anything for you to hear. 
believe and do them. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. May you never be among those that will turn away their ears from the truth. Let me tell you, this one doesn't have much, 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 much. Before you know it, you're 40, 50, 60, 70. You're drawing close to the grave. <laughs> so whatever it takes you to run the race, you do it, you do it. Whatever it takes you to run the race. So like I said, it is wrong for a woman to obey his pastor more than his the wife, I mean the husband, sorry. Obey your husband. And that is why when they give you an office of a pastor or when they give you an office of a bishop, which is not biblical in any way in the Bible, because the office of a bishop is meant for a man. The Bible said that if you desire the office of a bishop, that you must be a man with one wife. But now, women, they were women. It be like say women are married now. So I think we are going to see the way the Lord will unity come with decency of differentiation between a man dressing and a woman dressing. Where was the origination of a woman putting on trousers coming from? Some people will tell you in Scotland they do wear uh, skirts. I've told you that story before. And let me say something to you. As long as you know, you know the funniest thing, eh? Eighty percent of trousers sold for women are body, body, body hawk. Body hawk is that what it's called? Eh? And let me tell you. Immediately you're coming. First of all, a man looks at your shape, your body. And that is discred uh, crediting the person's heart. The Bible made it so clear that as long as you have had that uh, thinking in your heart that you have already done what? Simply as God. Is that correct? So, when you give yourself an opportunity putting on something that is undecent, putting on something what partakes to a man and it causes another man to even have ordinary feelings of fit in your heart, if God comes, you're not going anywhere. The reason is because you are not even seeing it as, as a sin. That's why I tell people that one of the sins that will finish a lot of people to hell is the unknown sin. Known sin. Known sin is manageable. Which one is known sin? You went in and you slept with somebody. You are where you con uh, committed adultery, fornications, and all that. Is that correct? So, before you, that's a sin. But a sin that you came to somebody's house, I think I've thought that here before, that you came to somebody's house, you didn't take permission, you went and took his matches, believing he's your best friend, and matches is not costly, he might not even ask of it, which is correct, without taking that permission. When that person comes back and look for the matches and look for the matches, he will just, he's, he will go and buy another one. On the judgment day, you might not know you have committed a sin and you didn't ask forgiveness of sin simply because matches is not costly before your friend is nothing. Your friend might not even ask about it, but it was a sin because you never asked before you took it. So all those kind of unknown sin are the major things. So when you wear this body hawk, you never knew that when you were sitting by a young man in the church that the man's heart when I was in school, I was in a, I was in Enugu. I've told you this story. And I was playing keyboard. I won't mention the church. And I get one minute skirt. As she danced and bent down, you will see her underwear pants. Right. That she was wearing. Now, as a young student at that time, what will you think I should be thinking? I don't even say something here. And at that time, the lady is not aware that he has caused somebody somewhere to begin to imagine a sin in his heart. And the Bible says when God wants to make that judgment, it is you have sinned and the person who called you into that sin has a fully done what? Sin. Amen. Amen, church. So, and the Bible said what we read in Matthew that it is better you deny yourself those comfort and do what? Those things you see as comfort. So, you will tell them what does it take you to forget about wearing that thing that exposes your body? There is nothing like women and men trousers. 
don't wear what partakes to a man. Very soon, the dad will speak on Bob Risky or whatever they call him. He will be shocked to hear me out. God bless you. More questions? Okay. Sir, it's still on that. Though you have clarified the passage, yes. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. It's happened that I visited a family during the week, and they were just listening to a preacher, too, that the preacher preached on this particular topic. Okay. Okay. Um, the okay. They were watching him, mm -hmm. and when he read the place, he was trying to explain to his congregation that garment there means um, work. That God says a woman should not do a work that a man should do. Even though you have thought on it. I just want to say that it's not about whom you are. It's about what you know. Okay, so in his explanation, he said what it means is work. That you shouldn't do you know, the Bible warned about the perilous times where even the preachers will convince even somebody who is an elect. Hello? Somebody who is what? An elect will be equally what? Be convinced. He said it is not work. It is of heart. Let me tell you, the Bible made it so clear that it is an abomination. If it is an abomination for a man to put on what belongs to to a woman. woman. Now, now you will see a man go and put, man, put up breast, put up hip hop, and at the end of the day, you're a man, no? you call yourself a woman. Let me hear you. Too. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, man. Hello, Pastor. I know we are running a race, which is the eternal, eternal life. That's the race we are running, salvation. Amen. Why is God so concerned about what we men do? When there is no woman or man in heaven. <laughs> he said, why would God show concern on what men and women wear? And here is my answer. The same way God shows concern in the pattern of life you live. The same way he shows concern that things are not moving for you. He wants things to be good for you. The same way you pray and call that death, death is coming. Kidnappers want to come. God, save me, oh. And he shows concern and deliver you. And you. you know, I was kidnapped one time. With the AK-47, they started escorting me from the bush. After the Lord did what he did. I don't want to go back to Narada's story again. Amen. Now, the same way God showed concern on my case was equally the same way he saw it. If God does not show concern, that means he does not love you. That's why he said that he, a father cannot hear a cry. A mother cannot hear a cry of his baby without doing what? Turning back. So, in terms of showing concern, God needs to show concern. The place we read in Proverbs chapter 7, he made it so clear, right? That he said, and I met a woman in the attire of what? A harlot. Is that correct? That means there is an attire you will wear and it represents in Nigeria or in Africa, we call it a shabu. Eh? So that means there are dresses you wear and it is ungodly. There are things you dress with, it, shall, it is what? That is why if you are a child of God, you dress very decently. Is that clear to you, sir? Okay, yes, let me hear you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, going uh, with what we're hearing this morning, uh, based on the scripture. Yes, sir. I believe, um, I just want some clarity on this. Very well. Um, during the days of when the Bible was written, Paul and Jesus Christ, I think the men wear robes. Garments. They call it robes. Yes, but that's the garment from head to toe. And the yes. women also wear they tell you the same thing, mm -hmm. but slight different. So in modern age now, some women put on trousers, some men put on trousers. So I believe the major thing we'll be focusing on here is mostly decency on what you're wearing. You know, most women might wear that gown you're talking about, but the way they sew that gown or what the gown is bringing out from them, you will encourage them to enter into the church. Okay. And that's the gown. Okay. And some women might wear that same trouser, and you won't see anything 
of it, any It will look decent, like the banking. Yes. I got you. It will look very, very decent. Yes. So, on my own opinion, I don't know if a woman wearing that trouser that look more decent and what is it equally a sin? Is it sin? Okay. And if a woman that wears a woman gown and then showing all the different features in her, is it equally a sin? Too? Okay, number one. You're done, right, sir? I should go ahead. Okay, number one. You said that at the odd time, that this is what they want. Now, at this modern age, this is what is going on. So, you're differentiating then and now. There is one mystery I've noticed. That there is only one book that has been written and nothing has made it change. And that is this. And this thing came in a clarity. Now, let me tell you something. Even till now, even till now, men wear garments. Women wear garments. I have a garment. How many people have seen me wear garment here? I have a garment. Men have garment. I'm not referring of priestly garment. So that you won't say, okay, but that's a priestly garment. Men wear garment. Women wear garment. And when you see them, now, you're talking about tradition. That's what you're trying to talk about. Then at that time, there are traditions... In, in those countries, in the Hebrews, in this, and this is what they were. Now, when Jesus, when God was about to introduce a foundation of Christendom to the unbelievers, there were people he sent here. There was a foundation and a standard that was raised. Even in the scripture that we read, when you follow the scripture very, very well, when God was about talking about giving warnings, commandment to the Israelites when they come out of Egypt, giving garment concerning the hair, even the earrings, the garment, the how you plait your hair, how you cover your hair, he was so specific and said, do not put on to what pertains to a man or a woman. And I, I can tell you, if I can use the same language you use, saying modern world, I can tell you that even in the modern world of Africa, it is recent that women started becoming the pioneers of trousers. Hello, sir. Even at the old time, what our old men wear is when they wear something inside, they use Rafa as, as chiefs. And those are those who do their traditional thing, pour their libation, serve their gods and all that. Then when the true revelation came, I was watching a picture. I want to remember the name of this person. I was watching a picture of one of those that brought this Christianity one day. And I, and I wrote on Facebook page, I said, I think it is hard time for us to go back to old Christian life. Because at this time, you will see a woman just because he wants to look uh, good. He said he wants to wear trousers. You will see him in wear trousers. He will open here. There's one I saw. That one open Nyash. This thing is not fun. It's not becoming fun anymore. There's one you will see the wear. You know, you see them. Now, let me tell you. The first thing that eats a man or destroys a man is what you see. Hello. Now, my question is, if the Bible says, deny yourself, Matthew, Matthew 16, correct? He said, for you to get to that, he said, you're going to deny yourself some certain things. What does it take you that only on your service day, when you're coming to the presence of God, or when you're praying for, uh, uh, when you're praying as a woman, that you should do what? Cover your hair and dress as a woman. You know, there's a way you will dress now. If they remove your breast, they will think you're a man. Is that correct? Even you now as a man, that is a dress you put on and enter here or enter anywhere. When you sit down, everybody as I'm preaching, they will be listening to me, but in, in between two minutes, they will turn. If I go and bring a man that has this cotton, you know, this woman, and wear it and come here now. Some people will be saying, are we acting drama in the church today? Everybody will be what? Uncomfortable. Now, if the position of the race is simple, appear before God. So that thing, okay, let me, let, let me put this to you. 
As a child of God, does it take you anything that you came up, you notice that there are controversies in this area. Some people say this thing belongs to my son. So, if, since there is no good clarity for me, why don't I do what? I avoid. You know, this thing, this of heaven thing is so, it's just like the first time I preach about the earrings, woman being a pastor, being a bishop, which is not biblical, nowhere in the Bible. And I was ministering in one of my branches in the U.S. The young man said, what a crap are you preaching? And I smiled. When I finished with the scriptures, he stood up again and said, but nobody teaches us this far here. He said they would just, they would say Jesus has died. Uh, the veil has been broken. When he grace, anybody does this, anybody does that. I said, let me tell you, from the beginning of the world, there are rules of engagement that cannot be broken. There are things you cannot reverse. That's sometimes when I watch some videos, you see a woman in position of archbishop, overseer, then other men of God will be there, they will kneel down, and she'll be laying hands on them. I'll keep laughing in my mind. Because I don't know where that principle is coming from. Principle is coming from. A man is the head of a woman. And Jesus Christ is the head of what? A man. And that's why in a church, in every true church that has the revelation, we position a man pastor first before a woman that is gifted with God. And that woman that is gifted will be allowed to pray to. There are women that are highly gifted. When you hear them, you marvel. But in position of the altar, there are principles that guys say that cannot be broken. And you're doing it because, you know the one thing about God, when he gives you this gift, he doesn't take it away from you. Even if you're a sinner, you, you operate it. So you believe God is still working in you. And that's why when we started a church, I decided to teach more. My outreach ministry, the one in Kilo, in a service we have about 3,000 something at a service. Because we don't preach, we only do what? Professor, your name is John, yes. Were you born? Yes. Everybody, well, I went to America, the same thing. South Africa, the same thing. Swaziland, the same thing. But two, three years ago, as we started churches across the world, I've taken my time to teach revelations. And my happiness is we have men and women who are now understanding the truth. Revelation. And that's why in your church, if a woman is a pastor, one day God will give her assignment and the husband will say, no, I'm traveling tomorrow. He said, but God says I should go to. Uh, so who will the woman obey, God or the husband? That's a strong one, right? Because even you as a man, did you hear what chief said? He said, he said, when my, my pastor's wife gave them assignment, and me, I said, no. My wife now said that God will be, uh, how did he say? Steve, what did he say? Uh -huh. He said, you don't have, want to have conversation with God. You now kept silent. But inside your heart, you were not happy. Eh? And that is why it is for Paul to say a woman to lie silent. And not to be called into the office of the pastor was not a mistake because he knew at that time the husband is not happy. The Bible where we read in First Corinthians made it so clear that a man is the head of a woman. So a woman takes an order from the husband. So when you look at the principle of the spiritual things, that is why when you go to that, you know when we want to teach controversial teachings like this, we take time so you ask questions. And at the end of the day, your husband now, your pastor now will control your wife. That's very wrong. Your pastor. If you're a worker here, you're a married woman, and I tell you, you, you will join them, just like we're starting Abba branch, and I said, you will join them to go to Abba. You will stay four days. You get to me, your husband say no. My brother, don't go. My sister, don't go. Don't go. Amen. Because your husband is your head, not your pastor. I don't know if I'm a little person. No, 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 I'm asking. 
Okay. You know, I talked about a lady that yes. wears gown. Yes. Gown up to her leg. And, you know, the features of her body being shown. To okay. 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 And her body is like wearing body hair. No, 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 no. Wearing gown does not prove your decency. There's one that came here one time. It's a workout. And I came and laughed. I said, huh, I don't the build a branch in a go. Hanya, she, she's going. The nya, she's doing, go, 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 go. you know that kind of thing. I call my pastor inside. I say, when we close, tell her, if she's a worker, make she not try wear that thing. Come here anymore. Do you understand? Now, if gown is not a stipulation, in terms of when you wear any how gown, no. We are talking about these senses. In the side, there was a lady that came here last two weeks. Her skirt was here. Even before I saw her, the woman has given her wrapper to cover down. When she came to the office, she was like, but sir, my, I said, stand up. She stood up, I said, actually her gown, her skirt was above the knee. But you know that skirt that when you wear them, it comes up, except you. I said, when you were coming, it was up. And I said, ah, you must cover it and she started laughing. He said, Daddy, that's a good one. He said, a lot of people do not have that kind of courage because they will tell you they will miss members. I said, I don't, I don't need members. So in my channel alone now, the level of followers I have across the world, I might sit at home and without having a church. And I'll just preach and upload. The kind of members I have across, if I just, I was in Abuja yesterday, only that one person here was in Abuja, I had space in my hotel. If I send a test in my, in my official page on Facebook that I'm in Abuja now, I won't have space till I come back. So if I have followers across, must I have a roof where people come? I don't know if I'm saying something. But just tell them the truth. Let the truth follow them and let them understand it. So even if you're wearing gown and you show your body, and is the scripture made it clear that when you expose your body and it causes a man to think about sex in his heart, that the man has seen has already committed what? Fornication. That's what the Bible said, correct? Now, now when that judgment comes, God will judge you and judge the person who has caused you to commit it. So, how did the person cause you? The person introduced the spirit of immorality by wearing something that is what? Indecent. Your eye don't see them. Your mind is there. Sin has been committed. Okay, the same thing applies to somebody that wears trousers. Yes. Yes, 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 that is very, very decent. That is not bringing out any features. You are very correct. But the issue we are having in the trousers is that in the understanding and the mentality and the foundation when Christianity was brought, when you see a woman wear trousers, it is partake and sin that you are wearing what belongs to the man. Now, when we now read in the scripture that there was a place God made it so clear. He said, whoever that was what partakes the man or was what partakes the woman, that it is what? An abomination. Now, it's not a force to be confused. Does trouser belong to a man or does trouser belong to a woman? For us to make this happen, Matthew 16 says, instead of those issues to confuse you, he said, deny yourself those things so that you can do what? Make heaven. So, instead of us, uh, which one? Are you sure? But now, nah, but they learn it from you. Instead of that, we do what? We cut it what? Off. That finger that will make you do what? Cut it what? I don't know. Am I clear to you now? God bless you. Yes. Okay. Okay, sir. Let me hear you. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah, amen. Let God bless you more. Amen. Grace. Amen. Um, actually, I'm not trying to ask a question, but to add, 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 okay. just to add go what ahead. we are discussing. Um, if we can go back to the olden days dictionary and look for the meaning of trousers, the dictionary will tell you that a trousers is a garment of men. It's a male garment. But that one apart, you know, we are, we are now in a Laodicea age, which maybe some of us might not understand what, what I'm saying. And the meaning of Laodicea is, a, is an age of equal rights. So God, being the omnipotent, omniscience, and omnipresence, he knows the end from the beginning. Exactly. And we all believe that all scriptures are written by the uh, inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. We all believe that. And once we believe that, and these things is, is written in the scripture, 
we should understand that God is not making a mistake. Mm. Because he knew, like women wearing trousers is from the 19th century. When I was born, even when I was in primary school, I have never seen a woman wearing trousers. Mm. Imagine we come to this church now and everybody is on trousers. Mm. How, how do we feel? I will go back. Mm. And I think we are in a maybe a copper meeting. <laughs> so it's very, very clear. It's very, very clear what the scripture is saying. Mm. Like what daddy just said. If your right hand will cause you to hell, take it off, cut it off. Imagine you are going to an interview, a ministerial interview, for example. No man will put on trousers, no matter how you sew it. Mm. Even if you put on jackets, you will never try it. You will put on a decent woman. Dress. You know, there is this lady in our church, not here. You know, Christ took him to a different lane. Christ took him to a different lane. Mm. And warned him, never you wear trousers. Never you put attachment. Why should Christ do this to this lady? Some people died and later came back to this earth. You, and what did you see there? They testified that this is gate of hell, this is gate of heaven. I will not allow you to go to heaven. Why? You were putting on trousers. You were disobeying your husband. Why should those things? It's a lesson to us. So we should learn from them. We should learn from them. God bless you. That's just my little... God bless you. Let's clap our hands and celebrate that. That was, that was awesome. That was awesome. Yes. Okay. Hallelujah, amen. Watch some videos, Christian videos. Sir, I watched some Christian videos. Videos, yes. Understand? And I saw some Americans wearing trousers, and then they preach the word of God. Of God. Yes. But I'm seeing them wearing trousers. I don't. There's a topic I need to preach here. I titled that topic the serpent seed. The serpent seed. Where God calls you. But you operate with the mammon spirit. Let me repeat again. You know, there is spirit of God, and there are demonic spirit, and there are people who God has called, and they have left the ordinances and what God has given to them, and start doing another thing. Then another spirit possesses them, and when they prophesy, it comes to pass too. Eh? And God allows it. Is that correct? Then, but in your eyes, you see them as men and women of God. Eh? And, but in the sight of, you know, God is the head of all principalities. When he says all principalities and powers, it means that God is the head of both the genuine spirit and evil spirit. <laughs> that means God is the head of both the positive. So everything in existence, God is the, then he allows them. And that is why some of those people who are called, I said, many are called. Many. So all those people too, who operate wrongly, in the name of God and you see anointing, are equally called by who? By God. It's not Satan. When we, when we make this decision, uh, discussion on this apostasy, then you'll be shocked that there are people who are highly anointed and gifted. You know, the gift of a man make it away. And hear this, gift of a man comment without, without what? So you can be a fornicator and be a prophet or a pastor, an apostle. Is that correct? You can be a liar and be the same and God will not ask you. But on the judgment, when your works shall be tested. Amen, sir. So they can be worshiping God with their even they can they can be naked without wearing anything and sing anointing will take in the church. But on the day when the works shall be tested, ah, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing. Oh, if. Someday on the cross, 
assignment he has not the boss and said hey you madman come out so people in the boss started laughing where the man was standing he said oh god your, your fellow madman they ask you to come down out of shame the man came down immediately he came down the, the madman went like this he couldn't find the madman again within 10 minutes the boss crashed everybody died the man was saved now god wanted to save that man he anointed a madman because if God send a pastor like me and I go there and say, God say you should come down from this bus, he will even call me a mad man. But God needed the mystery of revelation. He just went straight and anointed a madman. That is why I've taught you here the difference between anointing of the Holy Ghost and the baptism of the what? Of the Holy Ghost. When God wants to deliver somebody in these streets now, he can choose anything, even bed, bed, anything. And he will anoint that person for the purpose of that miracle. That's anointing of the Holy Ghost. So anybody can be anointed. So anybody can be anointed. And they will sing and laugh and dance. You think anointing is there. Anointing is there. But there is no way for this race we are running. Amen. Are you clear now? Okay. Is there another question I want to be rounding up? Okay, let me hear you. Praise the Lord. Yes. Still in line with the teaching. Yes, sir. I think I believe if I wear any clothes and I come to church, I sit or stand and I'm not comfortable. I think that clothes is not worthy when you to church. Mm. Then my question is, ladies sitting down and using hanky to cover their legs, please, sir, what, what can you say about that? Okay. Uh, if he's causing problem in this church, he said the lady is sitting down. Using hanky to cover, I beg, if you're sitting there using hanky to cover your leg, next time, wear what will cover your leg if he has just preached to you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, there is this thing I saw in a ministry. Don't mention the name, but go ahead. So, a lady wore a trouser and came to the altar to give a testimony. Mm. So, I asked one of the members there, he said, the lady wearing trousers is a different thing, but Oka the no be. So I want to understand that. You know, we, we always way. say it here. There are churches that said it doesn't matter what you wear, that what matters is your. Let me tell you, if it does not matter what you wear, God wouldn't have warned you and said, if you wear what protects the man or woman, that it is an abomination before him. His apostles came and continuing the same trending. And telling you when you're coming to church, you cover up, you cover your hair, you do this. You So, for them to give you a standard of righteousness, you need to follow it. So now, and there is another part of it too. You can equally dress that well and your heart is dark. Hmm? You can appear decently and you're the most wicked. In fact, you're a winch. So, for this race to be complete, your heart matters. And your outward, Paul said it continuously. Your outwardness matters. It matters. Dress well. Don't be naked. Don't dress a harlot to dress it. And you say you're coming to God. So, is that clear to you? Okay. If you are 
my evangelist in the church. And your prophet prophesied to you that you should go to somewhere and preach to somebody to repent. And you told your husband, your husband is not a Christian. And he refused to allow you to go. Should you obey the prophet or your husband? Your question has been answered before, but the only thing I love in the addition of the question is you said, and your husband is not a Christian. That's the intelligent one. Because I've answered the question that the best order to a woman is an order coming from what? The husband. But now she said, now the husband is an unbeliever. That's a very radical one too. Very radical one. Because number one, that is now what makes you a praying woman. Eh? You go to your knees, enter your closet, make your husband your prayer point. That is why, have you noticed something in the scripture? When Bible wanted to talk about divorce, it didn't say when he caught a man, he will be divorced. Did you hear that in the Bible? But the Bible said, when you caught a woman, eh? you should do what? Divorce her. Now, do you know why? Because the Corinthians we have said a man is the head of the wife. And Jesus Christ is the head of what? Now, if a woman costs you something, you will report to the head, which is what? The husband. But now, if your husband do you something, you will report to his head, which is what? The worst thing your wife will do is to kneel down and pray against you. So, in fact, your life don't finish. Women do not even know that they are more empowered to cause problem to you than you, the man. When we were doing marriage anniversary, I, 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 I did this teaching. Because at that time, when you keep causing problems with your wife, she goes on her knee. She will report to your own head. And the head of a man, according to Corinthians, is who? Jesus. Is that correct? So, when he's reporting to your head to punish you, when God's punishment came, that's why when you're cheating in your wife, cheating, 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 he kneels down and says, God, because of that business that makes him trouble and he cheats on me, closes. The business always closes. You've not noticed that. I didn't say you should be wicked, though. <laughs> I, I will complete your answer. So, so when you look at it, for a woman to get it, if the problem of saying no is not coming because he is a man, it's coming because he does not believe on what the woman does. So, it is now the responsibility of the woman to go on her nails. And I believe if it is the will of God for that man to be brought to Christ, Holy Ghost will do his job. The job of we is to pray. And the job of the Holy Ghost is to convince and to speak to them. Amen. I have another question. About the dressing code. What if you are, you are, in, you are working in an organization and your dressing code is for Aziz and Yusuf? How if you are working somewhere and um, the code is, that's a very interesting question. And the code is transist. That is the time your faith is being tested on what you want and what you will. This time, you desire to work here. But according to your belief, unto the race, this thing does not favor us. That is where Matthew 16 plays and said for you to make heaven that you will deny yourself the good things of this world. So that means, do you choose to walk there and walk against your faith or do you choose to pray? I was in New York preaching when we started New York branch. When we, on the normal service, midweek program, people will come. On Sunday, you won't see, chair will be empty, people will be like, and I said, ah, what you happen? Everybody asks, what happened? They say, ah, that day I went to, I go to work. The next Sunday, I used the work as uh, a topic. And I said, what does it take God to provide for you when you desire for God to give you a job that you can work from Monday to Saturday? If you look at the commandment, the Bible said that you should keep the Sabbath, the holy, the service day, the worship day, keep it holy. Now, and in the commandment, it was so clear that on that holy day that you should not walk. You should not do what? That's what the Bible says. So automatically she said, okay, that she would, one of them said, okay, one of our deaconess, she went and prayed. 
after prayers, after some days, they sack her from her work. She was not crying. That did that. She, they have sacked her. I said, that means good thing is coming. I don't know if she believed, but God answered my prayer and another job came and she was shocked that the day they detailed her to work was from Monday to Friday. Every hour she comes from Monday to Friday. You see? So, and God changes. So, sometimes in that kind of question you ask, if the God is trousers, you will choose either to walk or to pray and ask God to give you where so that you don't walk against your faith. Uh, is that clear to you? Okay. Uh, no more questions. Can we rise up on our feet? Clap your hands for this God.